Hey everyone, it's Ross, and in today's video, we're going to be doing some fertilizing. Um, normally, when I grow anything in the ground, it's organically, and I don't fertilize uh, unless it's uh, some sort of organic fertilizer. Um, I find that, especially in the ground here, I don't really need a whole lot of fertilizer to begin with. We have a really heavy clay soil. However, though, in areas that don't get a whole lot of light, like this area that you're looking at here, I find that it's pretty important. Also, when we built this fence when I was a kid, um, in order to put this in, we needed to build up a berm. And we spent a couple days out here, I remember as a kid, we got bags and bags of topsoil from probably Home Depot or Lowe's and just stuck that up in here and created this berm so we could put that fence in. And I remember what the soil looked like. And looking back on it now, I've realized, wow, that soil is horrible. And I can certainly tell nowadays that nothing really grows all that well along these berms here, along this section of the yard. Even the grass never really grew well here. Um, so I've been, in a way, trying to build up the soil specifically in this location with organic fertilizer, um, with mulch, building up layers and layers of mulch, especially we've done this underneath our, our grapevines. We've had like three huge loads of wood chips underneath these, these grapevines. And over, the, over time, if I dig up underneath this, you can see that there's just a really incredible soil down in here that's black, full of humus. Um, and it just, came, it just comes out really well. And this is not gonna be something that you know, takes two seconds. This is a, a long process. If you really want to build long lasting fertility, it's just going to take some time. I would say around year three of just putting down mulch and having that break down over time, it's going to take about three years. Now, something I've come across and been using for a couple of years now is called comfrey. And this is going to actually speed up that process um, this is a plant that you can grow, and this is what a lot of people do in permaculture, is that they don't just have their fruiting plants in rows, they have plants accompanying them. So if I have, let's say, a honeyberry here, or this kiwi vine, I don't want to just have those plants. I want to have something accompanying them to help them out. In certain situations, you may want to use a nitrogen fixer. This is called gumi, and actually it fruits as well. Not only does it give nitrogen, but that's one way of having some sort of support. Um, when designing a forest, designing a, a food landscape, a backyard orchard, a, an orchard in general, I just think it's a great idea to kind of imagine how the forest falls. That's what people in permaculture preach all the time is that you're trying to create a system, a sustainable system, so that you don't have to bring in mulch. I don't have to go to the store and buy wood chips or buy a bale of straw, as an example. Um, you know, I don't have to do this. I have the mulch that I need all on site. Instead of straw, as an example, I could grow some grass, different ornamental grasses here. They're going to be high in different nutrients. And at the end of every fall, I can chop them down at the base. And then I have myself pretty much, well, not exactly a bale of straw, but something similar to the effect that in the terms of nutri nutrients, in terms of the insulative properties. So that's what we do here on my property is I try to include this and try to build the soil the best I can. I've, I've obviously focused more on other things, but this is certainly one of my focuses is getting a more nutritious soil back in this location. Um, and like I said, the comfrey is another tool that we use. And that's what I kind of want to make this video about is the, is actually the comfrey here. Um, you can see that we've chopped and dropped this and well, we didn't drop it in the right spot, but we are going to be putting this comfrey along these, this row here, this berm to help these newly planted plums, these standard plums that are going to be a spy aid against these wires to get this area more nutritious to also help out our pawpaw, which has been now in its fourth year, it finally is putting out some reasonable growth. You can see, look how healthy this looks. It's putting out these nice vigorous shoots. 
I'm just shocked. This is finally coming into fruition. It's, said, it's been said that it takes about seven years from seed for these pawpaw to fruit, and these are grafted, but um, I think I can get these to flower by year five, which I think is really something special, reasonable, especially considering this isn't the highest light environment. The soil here is really not that great. We've been building up the soil year after year underneath these trees by adding in lots of amendments. Every time this comfrey, this neighboring comfrey plant gets to the right size, I chop and drop it, put it underneath the comfort or the uh, the pawpaw plant, and this these things over time have finally rooted themselves out well enough to get to this point. Uh, certainly, if I hadn't done what I had done, I don't think these plants would be where they're at. So I think uh, there's a lot of value in this. There's also another good example right here is that this is a gooseberry and this thing has just taken off this year. Um, they really take a while to get established, I've noticed. The gooseberries, the currants, the honeyberries. Here's a honeyberry that's quite young. I mean, these things haven't been in here very long. And with the help of the gumi, with the help of these comfrey plants down in here, I have four comfrey plants that we just chopped back. And that is the biomass from four plants. That's not bad at all. And th the special thing about this is that this is gonna break down really quickly. The roots go real deep on the comfrey plants. It brings up nutrients from deep down in the soil. You put that down somewhere you want it. And I'm telling you, man, it is one of, if not the best plant that you can use in a temperate climate um, to get a more fertile soil. Uh, there are some downsides and it's very obvious by looking at this bed that there are seedlings that have come up. I've chopped and dropped this actually in this bed on top of this kiwi vine in particular and in its place after chopping and dropping in here this spring it's put up seedlings um, especially if you let them flower like this seedling has here. If I were to chop and drop this and put this somewhere the chances of this then spreading its seed somewhere else is high and there's also they say that there's varieties of comfrey that don't do this that don't spread but this is supposed to be one of them <laughs> and it has so i don't know if that really exists to be honest with you but um certainly uh it, it is one of the downsides and i think that is the biggest downside but it's not a huge downside it's not bad especially if you're trying to build soils that it's propagating itself underneath these dwarf apple trees real easily. And that way it's then creating biomass in this location that I can chop and drop right now if I wanted to. And so what if it, you know, if it spreads its seed? It's not the end of the world because I want, I want the comfort here. You know, so it really depends on your needs and what you want. But you could also, if you really wanted to, is chop and drop this before it flowers. And that's a bit easier said than done, but that's possible. Uh, but overall, this is what I'm doing today, is that I'm coming in here and just adding as much fertility along this top of the berm here as possible. Um, so that's kind of it, guys. We also took out a gumi, and you can see the nitrogen fixation nodes on this gumi berry down in here on the roots. But I'm going to leave you guys with this. You can see these white little dots right in here. That's nitrogen. But anyway, guys... I want to thank everybody for watching, and uh, I'll catch you all for tomorrow's video. Take care.